In this video, we're going to do an introductory overview of my home theater space. What led me to building it and what's in it today. As I mentioned in my first video, we initially passed on the idea of a dedicated home theater room when we built our house. But after a few years of trying to get the living room working for the cinematic experience I was looking for, eventually I gave up and decided to go ahead and repurpose one of the existing basement rooms. The room that we used was originally built as a home gym, and as such, it was finished like any other room of the house. Uh, wood floor, trim, paint, drywall, and so on already. And in addition, we covered a couple of the main walls of the room with large mirrors intending to work out in there. And I hung an older 57 inch uh, flat panel TV that we had in the space. But a few years had gone by and neither my wife or I actually outfit the room with any gym equipment. And we never started using it for that purpose. Um, I really enjoy training, but I discovered fairly quickly that I like training out of the house at a gym, not really at home. So as such, the room sat empty and it just became like a storage overflow essentially. But after considering options for the living room and starting to talk about doing some floor standing speakers and some other things in here, um, we basically finally agreed and went and gave the green light to abandoning the idea of that room as a gym and to move forward and go ahead and convert it into a home theater space. So I started planning and really began work in the summer of 2018 and had the room finished uh, essentially by about mid-2019. So converting the existing room made for some interesting challenges. For one, I didn't really want to tear anything up. The room was already finished, the drywall was already set, the trim was done and painted. So other than removing elements, I didn't want to do any really any more damage. Um, removing elements, meaning taking the glass mirrors off the walls, taking the flat panel TV and its mount out, actually ended up removing a ceiling fan from the room as well. Because of that, I had to find some creative ways to do other things in the room, like how was I going to route my cables to where they needed to be for the speaker positions and the projector. It also made some decisions essentially for me uh, because I wasn't going to rebuild. I wasn't going to do an acoustically transparent screen with the speakers hidden behind it. I wasn't going to put my Atmos speakers in the ceiling, so I stuck with heights instead. But on the other hand, I also benefited from some lucky logistics in the terms of the layout of our house. So our storage room with my, where my AV rack is, is on the other side of the wall behind the screen wall of the theater space. So at least getting cabling from the rack into the theater room was fairly easy with one minor cutout um, through, you know, through that one singular wall. The room was also already finished with closable doors, so I had a completely sealed off space, which allowed me to do things like go for the complete black decor um, in a fairly light controlled or a nearly completely light controlled environment. So with regards to the current gear we have in the room, here's the full list. The projector is a JVC NX7, full 4K, frame adaptive HDR projector, very awesome unit. The screen is a Stewart Seema Neve 135 inch fixed frame and I just went with solid white. It's a 7.2.4 speaker system uh, the front towers are Focal uh, 1038 VEs, and the center is a matching 1008 BE center. For the surround channels, four of them, and for the height speakers, also four of them. I stuck with Focal, but I went with an Aria 906. The Focal BEs were fairly expensive to use them in all of the speaker positions, but sticking in the Focal line or brand, mixing the two lines, works really well. There's two subwoofers, uh, RHEL S5 SHO subwoofers. Um, for processing, I use a Marantz AV7704 preamp, and all the speakers are driven by a single Emotiva XPA11 Gen 3 amplifier. It has extra power for the front three channels and then dual amplifier blades for the remaining eight channels. In terms of sources in there, we run an Apple TV 4K, as mentioned in my prior videos, that's my favorite streamer box and I just recently upgraded those to the new 2021 model. And I also run a Kaleidoscape, which is really the main way we try to enjoy movies and content in the theater space. So for Kaleidoscape, I have a Strato C and a 24 terabyte Terra. We hold quite a few movies. The whole room is protected on a CyberPower 1500 watt smart sine wave UPS. All of the cabling is really monoprice. 
And the room is controlled and driven with a control four system, including their newer Neo style remote. I also keep an older iPad mini in the room for a quick grab and go reference and additional control and app capability for the devices. The room is fully treated with panels. Uh, for those I chose GIC, there's some 242 panels, some 244 panels, as well as Tri-Trap, 16 panels in all. And the couch, the seating, is, is just an IKEA, IKEA Kivik series sectional with two big chases, fairly large, um, fairly large seating. You can fit two full families on there pretty comfortably. And then there's a mix of other assorted finishes, of course, the speaker stands, the mounts, uh, we had some blankets made, the theater's in the basement, it can kind of get chilly down there. Some nice pillows, some bean bags, and a couch table that's positioned behind the IKEA couch to set the remote chargers and drinks and that sort of thing on. There's not any gaming systems currently connected in the room um, as I'm recording this video, as I'm kind of in the middle of tinkering with my gaming platform setup, and I'm doing more of that in the living room at the moment. Ultimately, I will end up with some game, some manner of gaming capability in the theater again, as it's a really great environment to do that, but TBD what that might actually uh, end up being. So our theater room was essentially an entire DIY project. I pretty much designed, coordinated, and mostly hands-on built the entire space, with of course some help from my wife and some really great friends. So that included doing everything, removing the existing room elements, again, the mirrors, the TV, and so on, selecting and installing all the gear, mounting, um, putting up the panels and all that, painting and the finish work to convert the room from its prior color and setup to the, the black theater space. Um, we carpeted over an existing wood floor, did pay to have that installed. I wasn't doing the carpet myself. Um, we also contracted a local seamstress to make the custom curtains that hang around a good portion of the room which is really kind of a cornerstone of the space and something I'll go into much more detail in a future video. I also did all the device setup, configuration, cable runs, and, and so on. So we really enjoy the space and we use it as a family, I'd say at least once a week usually, sometimes more, especially in the last year and a half or so during this COVID time. It was actually pretty timely to have the room done and ready um, for the start of 2020. So we made very good use of it last year for sure. I will on occasion use it solo or just my wife and I, but with life and family commitments, that's kind of somewhat sparingly for us. So the, the, the most use that it gets is when it's all four of us essentially ready to watch a movie. And that tends to be, again, what really the focal point of it is. If I'm gonna watch a TV show, most of the time I'm doing that in the living room. Although we do go downstairs for the occasional kind of blockbuster thing like a Mandalorian or whatnot. Um, family video gaming also kind of finds its way more to the living room as well. So if I do do gaming in the theater, generally that's gonna be just me, single player story mode or online with friends kind of things. I did quite a number of Destiny raids down there, which was awesome, as well as playing a good bit of like Red Dead Redemption 2 and some other cinematic style games. It's a perfect environment for that. So in the end, I'm really glad I built it. And the experience of doing it is, has been pretty rewarding, actually. I'm pretty proud of it. And it's opened up some doors that I, I didn't expect it to as well. So all in all, I think I built a pretty balanced room, which is important when you're specking electronics and you're trying to integrate technology. Um, everything aligns and comes together really well. I don't feel I really wasted or like over or under invested in any individual parts of the room. Everything. Everything meshes together kind of at the right cost, the right level of performance, and the right level of capability. Putting much more into the room, I don't think would have necessarily returned back on that investment in any more, say, major significant gains in performance versus what I have. So my plan from this video relative to the home theater going forward is to break down all the various elements of the room, construction, selections, and so on, but break it down into individual videos and make sort of a home theater building series. Hopefully that series can serve as a scalable reference to anybody thinking about a similar project. So thanks so much for watching. If you have questions about the space or specifics that you would like to have me expand on in the builder series, please share those in the comments. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and hit the bell and come back for more content. Thanks.